Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to save attachments from email into Office 365. So this can be a tricky subject. There are lots of ways to save an attachment. There's a different experience depending on the version of Office you're using and the version of Windows. So it can be a little disorientating. Let me walk you through a couple of different options and you can see if they fit your experience. If they don't, hit me up in the comments and ask me some questions. On this computer that I'm demonstrating on today, I've got Windows 10 and I've got Office 365 Pro Plus. So that's the version of Office that updates itself. If you're using Office 2016 or an earlier version that isn't Office 365, then you will definitely have a different experience. But hopefully I can match it as best I can. What I've got here is an email that's been sent to me from Megan and it has a attachment and it's a Word document. So if I click on it, it's gonna give me a preview of the document in line in Outlook. So if I drop the attachment menu down by clicking on this little arrow, I get the save as and the save all attachments options. So these are the traditional options that you should see these in every version of Office and Outlook. So if I choose save as, it's gonna open up a, a browse window and I can go browse on my computer to wherever I wanna save that to. It's more than likely though that you want to save it to Office 365. You don't want to save it to your computer. You want to save it to the cloud, to your OneDrive or to a SharePoint team site. So this is my first tip or practice to follow, which is to synchronize your files so they are available in this view. Now you can see here, I've got a couple of options here. One is called Contoso, if I just stretch that out a bit so you can see it a bit better. I've got one called Contoso and one called OneDrive dash Contoso. Contoso is the name of the organization, the name of the Office 365 tenant that I'm using. You'll see your own name there. And the same with OneDrive. So what I've got here is a synced SharePoint team site library and a synced OneDrive library. Okay. So if I click on my OneDrive, it's going to show me all my OneDrive files there listed. And if I click on this marketing document library is going to show me all the, the files in that marketing document library. So this of course needs some prior steps and this needs the OneDrive client installed. It needs it to be set up and it needs you to have synced the files down to it. So I won't go over the OneDrive setup, but I will show you how to sync a library down to your computer. I've switched to the browser now away from Outlook and I'm looking at my OneDrive. On anyone's OneDrive, you'll always see this sync button here. And syncing OneDrive means you're taking a copy from the cloud and you're putting it on your computer. And what you end up with is an align in Windows Explorer that has a copy of your file. So if I put these side by side, you can see you've got exactly the same list on the left hand side, which is my OneDrive in the cloud, and the right hand side, which is my Windows Explorer on my computer you'll notice that if I select a file and delete it, it's going to delete on the right hand side as well. Okay, so they're kept in sync. That's all that means is when you say syncing files. One of the benefits for saving attachments is when I'm in Outlook and I can go to my planning document and save as, so I'm saving as my attachment, now the two entries for my OneDrive and my team site appear here. So it means I can save it to Windows or to File Explorer, Windows Explorer, just like I'm used to. So that's one of the big benefits here. And as I save this file, so if I choose my OneDrive and then choose save to save my planning document, now that's saved. Now if I switch back to Explorer, you'll see I've got my planning document there. Now if I open up the browser, you'll see I have a planning document over here too. Oh, it's at the top here, there you go. Because I've saved it over here, it's automatically synced over here. So that's one way of managing your attachments. Another way to save attachment is to obviously open them up. You'd see that you've received an attachment, you double click it and it opens up the app. So it's opened up Word and now it's showing me the document. So if you wanted to take a copy of this document, because it's read only at the moment, because it's just an attachment, you'd usually go to File, Save As, and now you'd have your Save As options listed here. 
Now, if you've just started using Office 365, um, like I have here, you won't have a recent list. Now, the recent list is built based on your sort of interaction with Office 365. So as you visit sites and save things to sites, open things from sites, it will start to build a, a useful list of sites and sources here. But if you haven't got that, then you've got these options, which are your OneDrive. So if you click on that, you'll see your OneDrive list and you can rename the file and save it here. Or you've also got your sites list. These two options are here based on whatever you have logged into Office as. I come up to the right hand side here, the top link, you'll see here it's got my name. And if I drop that down, you see who I'm logged in to Office as, which is this Matt account here. Because I'm logged into that account, it's given me the option to save to OneDrive for that account and to the sites for that account. So OneDrive is relatively straightforward. You can save the files to OneDrive, you know where it's gonna be. Where I see a lot of my customers getting confused is on the site section, because Microsoft haven't done an amazing job of making that intuitive. So when you click on sites, you're gonna see a frequent list, and you're gonna see a following list. The frequent list is obviously built based on the work you've been doing, so opening and saving and visiting sites. And then the following is probably the most useful to you because you can actually choose which sites will show up in this list. So following is an Office 365 feature where you tag a site to follow and then it just makes it easier to get to. And let me show you what I mean by following. If I switch to my browser and I go to the SharePoint tile and one thing you'll see in the top left hand section of this page is the following site. So you can see I've got marketing and I've got my project team site, both with a star. Now I can toggle following on and off. You can see if I hover over the star, it says stop following. If I choose stop following, it actually removes it from that list. And if I wanted to toggle it back on, I could find it again and toggle it on. You'll notice these two sites here, they're the ones that I see in my following list here. So if you ever want to make sure that a site appears in this list, what you need to do is follow it. You can do that in a couple of ways. The first way, as I just showed you, or if you're in the site itself, so if I click onto marketing, on the top right hand corner of every site, you'll see the following link here, and you can just toggle following on and off from there as well. So because my following sites are listed here, I can just click on them to choose them to save to, and then I can choose my file name and save the document. I can also go to the more options link here, and I can get a sort of more traditional Windows view. Now notice up in the top corner here, I've got the, the address of the marketing site, and then in the middle pane here, I've got the document libraries in the marketing site. So I can get more specific and move around. If I wanna choose that documents library, for example, I can choose that, I can rename the file, and then I can hit save. The next option down you have here in the list is this PC. So this PC is gonna give you almost like the save as option we have from Outlook, where you've got your traditional targets that are actually on your computer, like downloads and documents. But what you can do here is choose more options again, and now you can browse all across your computer, which also gives you the opportunity to choose the, um, the synced location. So OneDrive, for example, and in this case, Marketing Documents. It's a document library I've synced. So that's another way of, of saving as in the Office app to your cloud sources. So they're the, your synced sources that are on your computer. And when you save a file down to them, they'll save it back up to either the SharePoint team site or your OneDrive. The next option you have is add a place, and this is actually to add a, another Office 365 tenant. Most of the time you won't be using this because this will actually ask you to log in. So if I chose OneDrive, for example, it's gonna ask me to log into the new OneDrive location. And in most cases you won't have one, you're already connected to OneDrive. So you can ignore that one. The last one is to browse, and this just brings up a traditional browse window. So um, if you've got your files synchronized, you can choose them or you can save it to a location on your computer. The final option I wanted to show you was one from Outlook. 
when you select the email and then select the attachment in the email, you'll notice that the attachments tab lights up. If I just pull it down here and pin it, um, you're going to see this upload button here. Now, an upload button allows you to upload an attachment directly to a source. Now, you can see I've got my OneDrive here. So if I chose that, it would upload the file directly to my OneDrive. And I can also do a more here, which will show me the groups that I'm a member of. So if you remember going back to the browser and go back to the SharePoint tab, these are the groups I'm a member of. I'm also following them here. So if I was to choose one of these, say the project team site and click save, it shows me that that planning doc is now saved to the site. And if I go directly to that site now and to the documents library, it saved it directly into that library. So you can see it's useful and convenient. It doesn't necessarily give you a lot of control over where that document goes, but might be useful in some circumstances. So I hope this helps. I know it's uh, a little bit confusing. It's not helped by some of the features that are in place. So if you've got any questions about how you think you should best do it or your experiences, then please put them in the comments. And if you like this video, then please hit subscribe. And thanks for watching.